All right, good morning. Um, happy Saturday. Today we're going to be learning about the uh, millennium. Um, and it's, uh, again, a lot of information. <laughs> so anyways, let's, uh, let me pray. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would speak through me. I pray that you would co um, cover me by the blood of the Lamb. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just guide and direct everything I say. Let the main points of this chapter be brought out in an um, understandable manner that I will understand and that they will understand. Lord Jesus, help us to hear what you want us to hear. Lord Jesus, but we just give over this time to you and ask that you would just um, uh, give us ears um, to hear, um, minds to understand, and hearts to receive. Lord Jesus, the message that you want to deliver. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so Revelation 20 is going to start um, with um, going into the millennial period. Now, in the, the millennium, in uh, David Jeremiah's Bible, it says, Millennium refers to a thousand years and refers to a period when Christ will rule as king over all the earth from his capital, Jerusalem. The saints of God who return with him in the battle of Armageddon will rule from Jerusalem as well, helping to oversee a thousand years of peace and righteousness on earth while Satan is bound. Everyone entering the millennium will be a believer. Um, it says... Um, all believers um, have been resurrected, okay, into their new bodies. The Old Testament saints, the tribulation saints, and the church, okay, will be enjoying peace on earth for a thousand years. Um, this is called the first resurrection of all believers. Jesus is the first fruits of, is called the first fruits of the resurrection because he was the first to receive his resurrected body. We who are raptured receive our resurrected body in a twinkling of an eye. When we're caught up, we get our resurrected body, okay? Um, so it's called the first resurrected body. So this is going to deal with those who have died um, in the tribulation. So let's start reading. I Then I, John, saw an angel coming down from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit and a heavy chain, chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, that old serpent who is the devil, Satan, and bound him in chains for a thousand years. The angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked so that Satan could not deceive the nations anymore until the thousand years were finished. Afterward, he will be released for a little while. Um, so just a really quick overview of where we left off. Um, it says, remember at the very end um, of chapter 19, that um, Jesus came down. He defeated the armies that were there at the Armageddon um, in the entire army was um, killed by just a word of it out of his mouth um, and it says in the beast and the kings of the world and the armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army the beast was captured that's the antichrist and with him the false prophet who did mighty miracles on their on behalf of the beast um, both the beast and the false prophet were thrown alive in the fiery lake of um, of sulfur okay so the antichrist and the false prophet were thrown alive into the lake of fire Okay, now um, Jesus is going to deal with the devil himself. So the devil now is thrown, is bound. It says I, I, um, that the dragon, the old serpent who was the devil, is bound in chains for a thousand years. The angel threw him into a bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked, so Satan could not deceive the nations anymore until a thousand years were finished. Afterwards, he's going to be released for a little while. So... The Antichrist and false prophet are in the lake of fire. They're the only ones in there. The devil is um, bound into a bottomless pit for a thousand years. While Jesus reigns in, during the millennium, Satan is going to be bound. Um, and then he's going to be released at the end of the thousand years. Because everybody has free will to choose to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Even those that are going to go into the millennium. So the millennium is going to start off and it's going to be all believers. But then those people who are in the millennium are going to be married and have children um, for a thousand years. So the earth is going to be repopulated. Those people also are going to have free will. So those children, those children's children, they're going to have to um, make a choice to follow Jesus. At the end of the um, thousand years, Satan was released for a little while and those people are going to make a choice to either follow Satan again, um, or to follow Jesus. And it's un unbelievable to think that people would literally follow Satan, but people have free will. So then it says, um, verse 4, Then I saw thrones, and the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus and for proclaiming the word of God. 
Okay, those are the people beheaded during the tribulation. So John is looking out into um, the millennium, the start, and he sees thrones, and the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge with Jesus. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus and for proclaiming the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his statue, nor accepted the, his mark on their foreheads or their hands. They all came to life again, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. Okay? So those who um, were raptured, we received our resurrected bodies. Now, those, the tribulation um, saints, the ones that were beheaded and died for their faith during the tribulation, they're getting their resurrected bodies. And all of the Old Testament saints, they have received their Old Testament bodies. Okay? So all believers now have, uh, have experienced the first resurrection. Okay? And we've received our resurrected bodies. The rest of the dead... Okay, those are the non-believers, did not come back to life until the thousand years have ended. So all the people that are non-believers are going to go into the holding space, which is hell, okay? And they're going to be in there um, for the thousand-year period, okay? So those walking to the millenniums are the believers, okay? Now it's gonna, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the, um, the second death. Um, it says, blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection, so they're the saved, the believe, the believers. Um, for them, the second death holds no power, but they will be priests of God, of Christ, um, priests of God and of Christ, and will reign with Him for a thousand years. So the believers who have died, they're going to reign with Christ for a thousand years. Okay, all those who have died, because remember, some are going to go into the millennium that survived the tribulation. So you've got believers um, who are going to walk into the millennium who did not die; they survived the tribulation. Okay. Um, so they're going to go in and they're going to repopulate the, um, the earth. But the believers who died, so us who were raptured, the Old Testament saints, those who died during the tribulation, we're going to be in our resurrected bodies. And we're going to also go into the millennium, but it says that we're going to be priests of God and, and, and of Christ. And we're going to reign with him for a thousand years. Um, so our job during that time is going to be different. Okay. When the thousand years comes to an end, Satan will be let out of prison. He will go out to deceive the nations, called Gog and Magog. So it's a reference, again, to the um, um, enemy armies, the same name, because Gog means um, a, a leader or king, and a Magog, in every corner of the earth. He will gather them together for battle, a mighty army as numerous as sand along the seashore. So during the millennium, people are going to have kids and grandkids, and um, the earth will be repopulated. And, and unfortunately, people will still choose Satan. It says he's going to be able to gather out of this millennial period a mighty army of numerous as the sand along the seashore. And I saw them as they went up on a broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people in Jerusalem and the, the, and the beloved city. So again, Jerusalem is going to be the center because that's where um, Christ is going to, Jesus is going to rule from. He's going to rule from Jerusalem. So Satan's going to be unlet, let out at the end of the thousand years. He's going to be able to get this army of volunteers. People are going to volunteer for this army. And they're going to come and they're going to attack um, him and the city of Jerusalem. But they're not going to have a chance. because But fire from heaven came down on the attacking armies and consumed them. So Jesus is not even going to have to do anything. Fire is going to come down from heaven. Um, on these attacking armies, and it's going to consume them, just like that. Boom, gone. Then the devil, who had, been, who had deceived them, was thrown into fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. Okay, so after this, um, he's going to, after the thousand years, he's let loose, gathers this army, in an instant, fire is going to come down from heaven, going to destroy them. And then the devil, finally, is going to be um, thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, where he's going to join the Antichrist and the false prophet. So now the three of them are in there, okay? There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, so finally, all three of them are gone. So then verse 11 says, I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. So that's Jesus. Okay, this is called the great white throne judgment. Okay, now I'm going to pause for a little bit, and I'm gonna, we're going to go over the t different types of judgments. Okay, so in David Jeremiah's Bible, it says the New Testament describes at least three major future judgments. The judgment seat of Christ, okay, it's called the Bema seat also. Um, the judgment of the nations described in, by Jesus um, in Matthew 25, 31 through 46, and the great white throne judgment in Revelation 20. The time of the judgment seat of Christ also called the Bema Seat, occurs 
um, following the rapture when, while the church is in, with Christ in heaven during the seven-year tribulation on earth. So we, as believers that are raptured, we get the judgment seat of Christ, okay? And it's called the Bema seat of judgment um, during the seven-year tribulation. Um, the judgment of the nations takes place at the end of the tribulation. So judge, Jesus is going to judge the nations at the end of the tribulation, just before the millennial kingdom, when Christ destroyed the armies of the world that had attempted to destroy Israel. Okay, that was in um, chapter 19 of Revelations. The great white throne judgment happens at the end of the millennium. So now when we're reading um, chapter 20, and we're going to read about this in um, verse 11. This is at the end of the millennial kingdom, okay? After Satan's been bound, the non-believers are going to get the great, great white throne judgment. It says the great white throne judgment will not resemble in any way our current courtroom trials. At this final judgment, there will be no judge. Um, there will be a judge but there will be no jury, a prosecution, but no defense, a sentencing, but no appeal. This is a judgment at which sinners stand in the presence of the holy and just God to give an account of their sins. It is the one of the most um, awesome revelations given to us of a just God to give an account for their sins. Um, oh, it's the most awesome revelation to, um, given to us in the word of God. We view God as a God of love, but he, we, he will, must also deal with sin and sinners too. It says, don't, don't confuse this judgment with the judgment seat of Christ, where believers have, have their works judged and rewarded. At the great white throne judgment, there will, be no unbel there, will, there will be only unbelievers, and there will be no rewards. Um, in a way. So we're given a judgment, um, and it's called the judgment seat of Christ, that happens right after the rapture during the seven years. And that's to look to see what we have done with what we've been given here on earth. Um, it's not for salvation because we're saved by grace. It's to um, look at all the things that we've done. On, on We studied this a little bit before in a different chapter. All the things that we did for Christ, some will be burned like straw that we did maybe for the wrong motives, and some will be um, refined by fire um, into gold uh, and precious jewels. So that's the judgment we have. There's no condemnation in that. We're not going to be looking at and saying, oh, you did this without wrong. Because remember, if you're a believer, your sin is separated from Jesus. He said that I, it's, as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered no more. So we're not going to be get, given this um, um, life review of condemnation. We're going to be more, it's going to be more of a um, re, um, not an award ceremony, but you know what I mean? That's going to be looking at the works that you've been given um, or the works that you did on behalf of Christ. So that's, that's the white, that's the Bema seat, judgment seat of Christ. That's what we have. This that we're going to be talking about is for the non-believer. Then it's called the great white throne judgment. It says, and I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. Okay, so most scholars believe this is um, Jesus because um, in Acts chapter 10, um, 42, and 2 Timothy 4, 1, it says, Jesus is appointed by God to be the judge of both the living and the dead. Um, so he, the living, meaning us, that we were, that the, we are um, eternal life, those people got, get the Bema seat judgment. Um, so he's, he judged us then, okay, during the seven-year tribulation, the believers that have been raptured are getting that judgment. Um, and then, but he's also the spiritually dead get this great white throne judgment. So he's in charge of judging both. Um, so it said, so he's on the great white throne. Um, the earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. Okay, so where did, when did this um, white throat judgment take, pl take place? It takes place after the millennial kingdom, um, right before the new heavens and the new earth. Um, are going to come because it says the earth and the sky fled from his presence. That means that this old earth and old heaven is going to pass away. Um, so that's in Second Peter. Okay, Second Peter three ten. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Okay, so this is kind of talking about the great white throne judgment. Um, the, earth, the, the old earth and this um, old heavens are going to pass away um, after the millennial kingdom. Um, and the works in it. So all of the works in this great white throne judgment are going to be judged. Um, 
So that's why it says the earth and the sky fled from its presence. Uh, because it's kind of this in-between um, um, uh, time. Okay, so at the end of the thousand years, right before the new heavens and the new earth come down, which we're going to learn about in chapter 21, um, this great white throne judgment is going to take place because the non-believers have to be dealt with before we go into a time where there is no sin in the new Jerusalem and the new heavens and new earth. Um, so this part's a little bit uh, hard to understand. Um, uh, but it's kind of like they're taken someplace else. I'm, let me read you uh, what David Jeremiah says. Um, so he kind of explains it here. Okay. Uh, verse 20, sorry about this. Um, it says, the white throne is not set up on earth because the earth is gone. Neither is it set up in what is commonly called heaven because sinners are not allowed there. This judgment must then take place in some intermediate location between heaven and where the earth once was. So because this earth has passed away, this um, judgment is going to take place somewhere intermediate. Because it can't be, can't be in heaven. There's no sin allowed there. And this, while this is happening, the new heaven and the new earth is being um, created. Uh, so anyway, just a kind of interesting thing as to why the earth and sky fled from its presence. Um, I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and grave, and gave up their... And the, it says, The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead, and all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, so... This is like a lot. <laughs> um, okay, so everybody gets a resurrected body. If you're a believer, you get your resurrected body um, in during the rapture or before the millennium. Um, here, when it talked about that those that died during the tribulation, the Old Testament states all of the earth from the very beginning, from Adam to the end of the tribulation, everybody who's died in Christ gets their resurrected body, okay? And that's what we're going to go into the millennium with our resurrected body and into eternity with our resurrected body. Non-believers get a resurrected body too, okay? So when it talks about here that the sea gave up its dead and, the, and death and grave gave up their dead, everybody who's died as a non-believer from the very beginning, same thing, from the very beginning, to the end of the tribulation, it's called the second resurrection. They also get a resurrected body. And this, um, very sadly, is going to go, they're going to go into eternal separation from God in the lake of fire with a resurrected body. Um, so it's very sad. Um, so all of the earth basically is going to give up its dead. And it's either going to give it. It's either going to give up its dead, and it's going. To, they're going to have resurrection with Christ, or it's going to give up its dead, and it's going to have, be resurrected for eternal separation from God, and that is called the second death. So it says, "Blessed are those who experience the first resurrection, that don't experience the second death." Okay, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, whether you died as an Old Testament saint, whether you died during the tribulation, whether you die now or whether you get raptured if you're a believer in jesus christ you're part of the first resurrection and at some point you're going to get your resurrected resurrected body right when the rapture happens boom everybody gets a resurrected body um or right after the tribulation okay if you're a non-believer um you go into hell okay and then until the end of the millennial period um then when you have this great white throne judgment, then the non-believer is going to get 
the resurrected body. Because this earth and this this um, this earth and these heavens are going to pass away. So there is not going to be any bodies left in this old earth. There's going to these bodies that have died are are going to be judged and are going to be dealt with. Okay. That's what it means. And then how is that going to happen? It's in the books were opened, including the book of life. And the je dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. Okay, so these books are going to be open. It's going to be a recording of their life. Okay, and they're going to go and they're going to, you know, be basically judged on, on what they did. Um, and that's the difference between us who are believers and the non-believers. For us, we've got these things, these terrible things that we've done also. But it's like when Jesus died on the cross and we accept that, that death on the cross, he wipes that stuff clean. Every time we confess things that we've done, oh, Yolanda's done this terrible thing today. Because I believe in Jesus Christ, God, Jesus, whoop, but that's erased because she's got the blood of the lamb on her. Oh, Yolanda did this terrible thing again. Oh, she, she repented. Blood of the lamb, it's erased. Okay, it's as far from me as east is from the west. Not because of anything I've done to deserve it but because I've put my faith in him, and by his grace, I've been saved. Um, so for people who are non-believers, these things are being written, but they're not being erased. <clears throat> Which is very, uh, very sad, okay? Um, so they will be judged according to their deeds. Um, Sorry. As if that anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown in the lake of fire. So, the whole point here is we want to have our book, our name, written in the book of life. Okay? Because for these people, they're going to they're gonna go, they're going to be going before Jesus on the throne... And I've, I've watched some videos before of people who have had um, near-death experiences, you know, where they've died on the hospital or on the, on, the, on the operating table and that they've gone into hell, you know. Um, and every video that I've seen, basically they say, you know, when I was there, I, I knew it's what I deserved. Um, and then luckily they're, they're, um, they resurrect, or not resurrect, but they, they come back to life on the operating table and they get a second chance. Um, and so it's like these people, they're going to they're gonna be behind, before Jesus, and they're going to know. I mean, these books are going to be open, and it's like, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that, and I, I missed it. You know, I missed it. I, I had an opportunity to accept Jesus, and I, and I rejected him. I missed it. Um, and so it's going to be, that's why it's called the second death. Um, and then in the resurrected bodies, they're going to be thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever, forever separated from um, Jesus. Um, so anyway, that's the end. Um, but let me read this one verse in chapter um, Ephesians chapter two, uh, because it says, um, "But God, who is rich in mercy, because of His great love with which He loved us, even we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised." Uh, he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places with Jesus Christ, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace we have been saved through faith, and that not by ourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So it's by grace we've been saved. It's a free gift. Um, that's why it's important for us to share the word with other people because the reality of um, what they will have to endure is uh, horrific. And our, our heart should break for those who don't know Jesus. Um, we want their name written in the book of life. Um, we want our own name written there, but we want everybody we love um, to be written there, to be written, have their name written in the book of life. So anyway, so that was uh, chapter 20. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you and we praise you that by grace we've been um, saved. It's a free gift of eternal life, Lord Jesus, that you've given to us. And I pray, Lord, that you would just um, give us a heart for the lost. As we go into 2019, Lord Jesus, pe put people on our path that you want us to share the gospel with. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would see them with spiritual eyes, um, that they, we would um, see 
um, their need for you, Lord Jesus, and we would have compassion and that we would have boldness and that we would preach the gospel without um, compromise, Lord Jesus, that we would just um, share the good news of salvation um, and share our own testimony of what we ourselves have been saved from because people can't deny our testimony. Um, so Lord Jesus, help us to um, share the, our testimony with others of the of the grace that you've given us and the, the blessing you've given us, Lord Jesus, and help us to reach those um, um, that are lost for your sake, for the kingdom's sake, Lord Jesus. I just pray, Lord Jesus, for 2009 for divine appointments um, with those that we can share the gospel with. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood of the Lamb that has washed us clean from our sin. Thank you that our names have been, been written in the book of life where they cannot be erased, Lord Jesus, because no one will be taken out of your hands um, that's been um, pla placed in your protection. So, Lord Jesus, I just thank you and I praise you that um, our books are our names are written in the book of life. Um, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.